What is gender? Honestly asking, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you think of the word gender? Do concepts like blue is for boys, pink is for girls come to mind? Or maybe the phrases, you throw like a girl or be a man. Here in the West, we have very strict and very confining definitions and perceptions of what gender can and cannot be. Even if you look at French, we have gendered language and you have words like mademoiselle or monsieur. When you look at Spanish, you see words like senorita or senor. But what about if there was a language, maybe a culture, where, gendered was, where gender wasn't such big of a thing? Growing up, I was raised with both the American and Nigerian culture, more particularly Yoruba culture. My whole family, including both my parents, are Yoruba. Now, you may be wondering, what's Yoruba? Who even are the Yoruba people? Well, the Yoruba language and the Yoruba people are located primarily in Nigeria, Benin, and Togo, but you can find us all over the world. We have a very unique language, and across all our dialects, we still follow basic principles. A good example of that is my dad. Coming to the US, he was surprised by some of the linguistic norms. A good example of this is when he refers to me, and I'm used to this, he uses male nouns and pronouns. For some people, they may find that weird. They may think, OK, he doesn't understand language. Maybe he has a son, even. No, my dad's talking about me. I'm his only child. For him, words like he or she don't have a set meaning. They're not about gender. They're about referring to a human. Isn't that what words are for, to refer to people? Now, why is this? Well, in Yoruba society, we don't have an idea or concept of gender. So how do we identify? It's more about what you do, what you can give to your community, your society as a whole. No matter who you are, if you're good at something, that's who you are. That's how you identify. If you're good at doing hair, you identify as a hair maker or a hairdresser. If you're good at making dresses, you're a tailor or a seamstress. There's no real limit to who you can and cannot be. And my uncle summed it up in a very good way. He said, everyone's equal. There's no he or she. We don't do that gender thing. It's too many boxes. It's about your potential. So what does this mean in the long run? Well, across our culture, we have this thing called shakara, as my mom would say it, which was coined by the late jazz singer, who is also Yoruba, named Fela. Now, what is shakara? It's kind of a Yoruba principle and tenet that failure is not an option. As long as you're good and passionate about something, like truly passionate, you will succeed. Victory is yours. How does that translate, though, when you remove Yoruba people from Nigeria, Benin, Togo, and put them in a society where gender is such a big thing? Well, if you talk to most Yoruba people here, they'll tell you, I don't care about the whole gender thing. It's a confusing concept anyway. I care about what I do, what my family does, what my children do. And for me, being raised in both these cultures, I'm constantly asking if one culture is saying that this is important and another is saying that this isn't important, how do I myself identify as a Nigerian American? It's a question I've asked myself for my long 21 years of life, and I continue to think about. But recently, I think I may have finally come up with an answer. Yes, there's flaws in both languages and societies and cultures, and there's benefits to using both those principles. But as a whole, I kind of like the Nigerian way of thinking. Because I can just say, as an anthropologist, they would call me a historian. I get to give and teach history, culture, language. As opposed to here in the West, I'm just 
another senior in college who has a double major and thinks they can fix the world. <laughs> but I kind of like how Nigeria labels me because it doesn't feel pressing and I don't feel like I have so much pressure on my shoulders. It's a little freeing. I get to think of myself and everything I do as another historical milestone. And instead of me just saying I'm just another college student, I can be like, I could be a future historian for my people. I can spread my culture. I can teach it. There's nothing stopping me from doing that because that's what my culture says. That's what my parents say. That's what my grandparents say. So why would I say all this when I started with the question, what is gender? Well, if you look at the fact that there are cultures and societies that don't have a set meaning, and you see that there are cultures and societies that have a set meaning, how do you move throughout the world? How do you see yourself? Do you limit yourself based on the rules of the status quo, on what everybody else uses? Or do you embrace a more freeing and more open approach? I think that, especially nowadays, everybody should just be able to breathe and be who they are. Not let the way that society categorizes you define you. Because, as my mom would say, don't let this society define you in a way that you would not define yourself, for they do not set the rules that you will limit yourself within. Thank you. <laughs>